Alright everyone, welcome back to another anime review. This can be a review of an anime movie, another one that I've already re reviewed on my other channel. This is the first ever Naruto movie. Naruto Ninja Clash in the Land of Snow, and I forgot to bring up the fucking page, damn it. Hold on a second. Here, I should probably just grab this recording, but I won't because it didn't take too long after all. So, yeah, here we are. Okay. See here. Movie was directed by Tensei Okamura. The screenplay was by Katsuyuki Sumisawa. The story is by Masashi Hishimoto, obviously. It, it's starring Junko Takeuchi, Che Nakamura, Noriaki Sugiyama, Kuzuhiko Inoue, Yuko Kai, uh, Kaida, Hidehiko Ishizuka, and the music was by Toshio Matsuda. And it was made by Studio Pierrot, and it was distributed by Toho. It was released on August twenty first, two thousand four, in Japan. In Japan, and I can't find the English American release, although it does have a dub, obviously, because this was released a long time ago. So, yeah. Now to get the characters, the Main reoccur the reoccurring characters in this movie are Naruto Uzumaki, Sas Sasuke Uchiha, back when I actually liked him as a character, by the way. <laughs> Sakura Haruno and Kakashi Hatake. So yes, yeah, I do think he is really awesome in this movie for what he does in it. Because all right, and yeah. Anyways, though, now that I got that all out of the way with, I'll talk about the new characters in a bit here. Obviously, let's talk about the plot of this movie. All right. Naruto Ninja Clash in the Land of Snow takes place in the Land of Snow. It basically starts out with Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura watching a movie with Princess Gale in it and really enjoying it until they get kicked out because of Naruto's antics in which the princess actually get in, wh in which horses drive by with a captured princess. Alright. After they crash the party and reveal that was just a movie shooting. They're then taken to the Land of Snow, where they have to help reclaim the Land of Snow, basically, which was their previous, or which was their next shooting point. But Princess Gale, whose real name is, sorry, I haven't watched in a while, uh, Koyuki Kazahana, doesn't want to go there for some reason, and that's not known right away exactly why she's so afraid to go back to the Land of Snow, where she grew up at, basically. Because she's really Yuki Fu Fujikaze, the rightful heir of the Land of Snow. However, it being the Land of Snow is currently being ruled by her uncle... Um, what's his name? Not, it's not Sosetsu. I think Sosetsu Kazahana is supposed to be her father. Uh, oh, right. It's Doto Kazahana. It's the current ruler of there who, several, who, like, ten or so years before the start of the movie, actually overthrew his brother, which was, uh, her father, uh, Sosetsu Kazahana, and took, you know, right, murdered him and took control. He has three... <laughs> Three henchmen, Na Nadare Roga, um, Fubiki Kakuyoku, and Mizore Fuku Fuyu or Fuyukuma. Alright, and so Team Kakashi has to help them recover the land of snow, basically. That's the plot of this movie, and the, the reason why that Koyuki doesn't want to go back to the Land of Snow is because of what happened there during her childhood. 
All right, during her childhood is when, of course, her father was overthrown and murdered. And I am would imagine it was incredibly traumatizing for her. Actually, Team Minato was on that case. It's kind of interesting, because this is before you find out anything about Team Minato at all. The only one you actually see is Kakashi, but you know it was Team Minato. I'm not sure if this was before or after Obito's death. This is before you find out anything about Kakashi's team, way before that. But I'm not sure if this was before or after Obito's death. Obviously, it doesn't never says. But it was Team Minato. Whether Obito was involved or not, we don't know. But Team Minato, Kakashi, Rin, and Minato definitely. Who ends up going there to try to stop Doto, but failing. But they still managed to save... Uh, Koyuki, I assume that they bring her back to the Hidden Leaf Village, I'm not sure exactly. But, yeah, he, he does, ma they do manage to save him. And, yeah, that's, that's the plot. Wow. <laughs> pretty, pretty cool for the first Naruto movie, I must admit. In terms of, well, actually, this is the only one of the original series of Naruto movies that I have actually seen, but... In fact, I've only, out of the Shippuden movies, I've only seen the first one. I probably prefer the first Shippuden movie or the first Naruto movie, but it's still a really good movie, though. So that's sort of my review of the plot. The characters are always li really likable. Even Sasuke, once again, this is back in the days when I actually liked Sasuke as a character, okay? So, yes, of course, I'm going to like him in this movie. Oh, Sakura they played her part well. Naruto played his part well as the main character, of course. Kakashi did well, like always. Koyuki, I thought, was a really good new female protagonist. She played her part off very sympathetically. She acts like a total bitch towards Naruto and the others at first, but once you hear her backstory, it actually becomes sympathetic. And not in the and it might call me a hypocrite crit because I don't think Sasuke is sympathetic at this point in the series. Well, let me explain something to you, okay? I think, the reason why I think what Sasuke is trying to do is completely unjustified, the reason why, is because he's trying to just kill every, he wants to kill every man, woman, and child in the leaf, even though there's only two me people who he hasn't killed yet, who were even in, supposedly, who were even involved in the Uchiha Kai massacre. He's doing way more than he needs to, those people don't deserve to die because of it. That's why I think he, he's unjustified, okay? Although I kind of do hope he does it at this point to rectify his position, as I've said before. But still, that, I still think he's unjustified because of that. Alright. Now, as for Koyuki, though, yeah, she has a tragic backstory, like 95, no, like 99% of the fucking characters in the entire series, including movies and OVAs and specials and whatnot. But... She never tries to hurt anyone else, or blame anyone else for her backstory, who for her uh, tragic past, who wasn't directly involved with it. Okay, yeah, she's a bitch towards Team Kakashi at first, but that's just, be just because she wants them to leave her alone, and she never tries to kill them. Okay, so that's why I feel she's justified in what she does, and she does lighten up towards at the end of the movie, of course, and she becomes a really likable protagonist, I think. Doto Kazahana is a pretty generic villain, I think, but he still works and whatnot. And the other three villains are pretty cool, too, and Nagare, of which, even remembers Kakashi, which is kind of cool. One thing I never got, though, they use ice style. How the fuck do they use ice style? I mean, I thought that was a, the KK Genkaya, and so and so does Dodo. How, how how? I thought that was supposed to be the KK Genkai of Haku. Are they like members of Haku's clan or something? But just for some reason changed their last names. I don't know, but I thought that was really confusing how they were able to use fucking ice style, and I don't think it was ever explained either how they're able to use ice style. Maybe it was. If it was, please correct me in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure that it wasn't though. Alright. So yeah, anyways, what else is to say about this movie? The music is epic as always. Nothing more to say about that. The animation is pretty good, but that's to be expected because it is a feature film. The art style is amazing as always. 
excuse me, especially for the period of Naruto that this, this took place in. Back then in Naruto, the art style was good, but not really amazing. Here it's really beautiful, I think. Alright, the English dub voice acting is really good as always. I mean, even back then, Naruto's voice acting was good. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was still good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so what else is there for me to say? Nothing, I guess. This was just a really good movie. I do have some some complaints, though. I wish it was... I, I wish that the fact the ice style thing was more elaborated on. Uh, Alright, I also wish that... I wish that Koyuki's backstory had a little bit more screen time. Because you don't get to see very little of it. I think that would have improved the movie quite a bit because that was one of its main driving points in my opinion. Um, so yeah, if you hear any other complaints that I have about this movie. Um, not really. I mean, it was just really well done. Yeah, anything, any other complaints I have about this movie would definitely be nitpicks, like, I, you know, I wish they would have said where the Land of Snow located at, but that's just, I don't even know if you consider, can consider that to be a nitpick. That's just so fucking minor, it doesn't affect the score at all. Sometimes, sometimes even nitpicks can affect the score depending on how many I have, but that's the only one I have and I can think of off the top of my head right here. And really, it's bare bone at best, okay? So, yeah. Anyways, that's it for this review. I'm going to, wait, not just yet. I still have to score it. I'm going to give this movie an 8.7 out of 10 because I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed it with a couple of complaints in it, but not too much to call it a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. 8.7 8 out of 10 is my final score for this movie. So I hope you enjoyed this review. See you guys after you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.